Hey guys, welcome once again to One Life, One Chance. It's always great to have you, and we're picking another classic console game today, and that game is Wonder Boy in Monster Land. Now, this would have to be one of my favorite Sega games, at least apart from Space Harrier. And uh, the really cool thing about this, for me, is it's one of those rare games where I actually feel like the console version is better than the arcade version. There's just something really... I, don't, I can't put my finger entirely on what it is. Maybe as we go along, I'll be able to let you know more. But it just seems to have a lot more flow compared to the arcade game. Maybe it's just because uh, the arcade version, as you go along, is relentlessly difficult. And uh, it feels like it's just kind of trying to kind of bleed you from your money, even though it's still a good game. Whereas, you seem to be rewarded for your skill every time you practice in this game. Because you're only given one life after all. Uh, unless you have a health potion to revive yourself. Um, but anyway, since you're playing a game with only one life, uh, you're basically rewarded in the Master System version for repeat playthroughs, um, practice, developing your skill. You'll get a little bit further every time, and therefore this is a much more rewarding experience, I think. But anyway, you play Wonder Boy once again, and you got to traverse the land, and uh, you got to destroy... I think it's the Mecha Dragon. I don't know if I'm getting confused from Wonder Boy 2 or 3, but there is a big dragon you need to destroy at the end. And uh, this plays a lot like a RPG slash uh, platformer. It's kind of a mixture of the both. I'm not going to use the hybrid word again because you guys are probably sick of it, but this is what this game is. Um, but rather than collect experience, as uh, you go along, uh, you'll attack these enemies and collect gold. Um, and you can use that gold to buy better equipment like armor, boots, shields, things like that. And uh, you do need to upgrade in order to advance in this game, otherwise it's impossible. So collecting money and defeating a lot of enemies is imperative. Uh, it's really tough, you don't really get a chance to grind. Once you defeat an enemy, if they respawn and you defeat them again, you usually just get points instead of uh, money the next time around. So you can't just keep grinding the same enemy. So there's a lot of strategy involved in this game, guys. It involves uh, basically picking and choosing what you buy as far as equipment goes in order to get to the end. So, for example, if it was me, I'd probably upgrade my boots uh, a couple times. As you, as you know, the items would get more expensive as you go along. So, I mean, you've got like an $80 pair of boots, $180 pair of boots, a $360 pair of boots. Uh, platforming in this isn't impossible, so I think once you've upgraded your boots a couple times, you're good. Uh, what you really need to do before the end of the game, if, you're, if I was to choose, is to upgrade your armor more than anything. So, uh, make sure you save the big bucks, because I think the maximum you can spend on armor is about 500 and something dollars. So it is really, really expensive. But, uh, the point being, without rambling on too much, is you definitely need to use strategy in, in regards to how, uh, you manage your money in this and, and it's a fun element too I mean every time you play through you experiment to see what works for you so uh, what works for me might not what not work for you it just depends on your playstyle and and what you're comfortable with I guess but anyway as you can see so far we've traveled around we've defeated a couple bosses already um, you can find bosses in secret rooms in order to uh, instead of get a key to exit the level some of these secret bosses will give you a sword upgrade which makes hitting enemies a lot easier uh, that's the one thing you can't uh, upgrade uh, with money, uh, and that's your sword. All your equipment, your armor, and things like that you can, but the swords you have to find. Um, which is a nice touch. You get rewarded for doing extra battles, so that's cool. And uh, when you beat a main enemy, as you can see, you'll get a whole pile of cash and a key in order to advance to a next level. So there's just lots to see and do. I mean, the graphics are really, really colorful. They're great in this game. Uh, the soundtrack is nice too, and uh, yeah, the levels all change, they all look different, and uh, they just this is just such a complete game. I mean, it might remind you a little bit of uh, The Legend of Zelda 2, being sort of like a side-scrolling RPG, uh, except this is just a, a quicker experience, you know, it doesn't sort of drag on and on and on. Uh, if you go from one side of the game to the other, you can probably complete it, this in about an hour. Um, which doesn't seem like a long time for a console game, but I mean, it's just so fun that it's replayable. And then you can challenge yourself by trying to finish the game with as little equipment as possible. And sorry for the ramble, but I mean, you can tell how passionate I am about this game. It definitely was one of my favorites. Anyway, we, um, 
I'll have a look at my menu. As you see, I've got a revive potion, so if I die, we can uh, use that again. And we're probably going to last a long time here thanks to that revive potion. Because if you die, it doesn't count. So, uh, here we go. What have we got in here? We don't have quite enough money for that army yet, unfortunately. Hopefully, if we uh, defeat this guy, he'll give us enough cash. Oh, I think we're going to have just enough. How lucky is that? This is a really good upgrade to have early on. Especially because uh, now that we're uh, coming up to this next boss, he just jumps all over the place. And if he hits you, he'll take a lot of damage off you. And uh, I took a couple careless hits there too. Probably doesn't help that I don't have the shield yet. But again, you have to pick and choose what you get. And uh, I'm sort of thinking of the big picture. Right now, I don't need to block a lot, but I need to sustain a lot of damage. You can see this guy just jumps around like a bit of a flute. Fruit Loop everywhere. It's alright, we're good. So we're travelling okay at the moment. Next level is a pretty uh, good level actually to grind for cash. There's a little secret if we can make it that far, which I'm sure we will, I'll show you. And uh, there's a lot of hidden money bags in this area. And uh, now that we've got half decent armour and uh, boots, the only thing we really need is a shield. The shield is something I usually only upgrade once when I play through in this game. I haven't really felt the necessity to have an absolutely awesome shield. Because I feel like you just block everything pretty much the same in this game. Uh, but if I'm wrong, let me know. There might be something I'm missing. But the shield upgrades don't seem as important as everything else. And, uh, can we get past here? There's also sub-weapons, which I haven't talked you through, guys, yet. Are uh, you... You will uh, collect different weapons, which you can see in your top right hand corner. And if you press down on the controller, you'll let loose one. And uh, you'll throw a bomb or a fireball. It just depends what you have equipped at the time. And uh, yeah, it just helps your journey. I mean, I mean, they're not very strong, but sometimes they come in handy with some of the bosses. Um, now, I haven't really been walking you through the whole storyline because we're playing casually today. But there's all these secret rooms that you can go in. I'll show you another one here in a sec. This thing's just annoying me. Jumping all over the place. Um, you're given all these like cryptic clues and you can visit people in these walls and secret rooms. And if you get all the clues and make it to the end of the game, uh, you'll get an item that will help you in the very last labyrinth. So you can pick from two things, a bell, because um, the last labyrinth is a maze and if you go the wrong direction you pretty much have to start the level all over again. So you'll have the bell, um, that's the most handy thing of all of them, because the bell will help you navigate through the level as you need to in order to get to the final boss. Or you can pick the ruby, which makes the final boss a lot weaker. And I think it's the ruby anyway, it has been a long time. Um, I doubt we're going to make it all the way there, but I mean, we'll do our best. I'm going to collect this money. Now, that was the main boss, I can actually leave the level here now. But there's a little secret, if you go down this little pit, and uh, exit that uh, door where we fought that boss will respawn and you can grind it for money all over again which is really really handy as I said money in this game is a precious commodity and uh, it will take on that boss again you can only fall down this pit once unfortunately so you can only uh, grind this boss an extra one time see if we're playing the arcade version of this game I probably would have used about five credits by now so, I mean, the difficulty in this is a lot more balanced. Cool. So, as you know, we've already gotten the key, so we just get a heart to replenish our health, which is a nice reward for grinding that boss a second time. So, we've got a full health now, plus a revival potion, and that's absolutely awesome. We're going to last a long time yet. Probably should have gotten a shield by now, but we'll buy one around the corner. Because, yeah, you really need to block these arrows. But at least now that we have the armor, it's not doing too much damage. We'll just try and use our platforming skills here. Gosh, I'm having more trouble at the snakes. <laughs> it's embarrassing. Um, these birds most of the time drop hearts. 
That'd be right. Just make me look like an idiot by dropping gold instead. And then there's an... I can't remember how I know all these secrets. It's from when I'm a kid, but there's a hidden door here where you can fight for another sword. I mean, these enemies in the Sega Master System game take about 10 to 15 hits, which in my opinion is pretty reasonable. Pretty sure I've hit this guy about 50 times in the arcade version and he still hasn't died. It's incredibly frustrating. Because they also take much more health off you on that copy as well. Ah, cool. You grind for hearts here. We'll see what's in this door. There's probably something for sale. Oh, we don't need any we don't need any armor for now. Upgrade later. I haven't explained to you what the hourglass does, but you've probably worked it out by now. It basically works as a timer, so if you spend too much time grinding and arsing around, it'll run out, and every time it runs out, uh, you'll lose a, a heart or a piece of your health. Um, but you can also, s you've probably seen that you can collect hourglass as you go along, which will reset the timer and give you some more time to basically do what you have to do before you finish the level. So just get that one out of the way. And uh, this is a challenging section, not just for the enemies, but simply because the time is running out while you're trying to navigate these things that are just flying all over the place. They're annoying. Alright, cool. We're out of here. I hope we're out of here. Yes, we're out of here. This next level that we're about to do, where we go in the pyramids and meet up with the Sphinx, it's usually an area I sometimes get stuck on for some reason. It's usually plain sailing for a little while afterwards, at least for me. And keeping in mind, we still have that revival potion, which is going to be incredibly helpful. Don't want to do that too often. for killing those things and thanks for getting that secret sword as you noticed uh, the one hit kills now so handy we're really cashed up now we should be able to get some good stuff can't remember if there's many shops around here I think there's a fair few in the next level oh there's a secret bag again oh wow look at that cashing up I feel like a baller See what's in the store. Oh damn. I was hoping to make that revival potion last as long as possible, but can't always be so lucky. Maybe sometimes you can uh, find them lying around when you defeat an enemy, but most of the time you have to spend a hundred gold to get a new one, but it's not really a bad investment to be honest. So the Sphinx here will ask you a question, a random question. If you get it correct, uh, you'll be able to pass, otherwise you'll have to battle him. How do I stay in shape? Well, I don't know how I'm supposed to know, but I'm going to pick jogging. Nope, I'm an idiot, because apparently I don't know what he does in his personal life. Not my fault if he didn't tell me. Can't remember the secret of... Okay, so you got to jump over his projectile first and then hit him. So it's a pretty basic pattern, this one. tedious how long some of these boss battles take, but I mean at least it's pretty straightforward. Uh, and, and you're still losing hearts while you're doing this as well, because you just, the time limit doesn't stop in the boss battles either. It's almost like you have to preemptive his bullet. Oh, so annoying. I think I've ever had so much trouble at the Sphinx. Hopefully there's a hospital on the next level, otherwise we're going to be in a world of hurt. It should only take two more hits, hopefully. Okay, 
Maybe three more hits. He's on red, that usually means he's almost dead. There we go. It's not over yet. And when you need hearts, they're dropping uh, points instead, which is really annoying. What have we got in here? We are going to need better boots. I probably wouldn't go as far as getting the $380 pair because that's money you'll need for armor later on. And I think we're over the halfway point of the game now. Oh, please tell me this is the hospital. Oh no, but we can get this elixir and we're about to die so it's imperative. I wonder if you can buy another one. Uh, should we risk it? Probably should, hey. Keep going for as long as we can. Okay, so this is another one of those boss battles. And, uh, in order to get a sword, I think it is. I think this is one's for the sword. Can't let him hit you, otherwise he'll steal your gold. That's just terrible. Yeah, cool. Let's see what's in here. Okay, so it's going to unlock a sec secret platform now. a little secret here in order to collect uh, items in order to advance further in that final level like I mentioned but we're not going to carry on with the secret in this game because it's not looking like we'll make it that far this time around a certain amount of points you probably notice you get some extra hearts too so you get rewarded for our uh, progression so the more you grind for points and all that uh, it does benefit you a little bit so I just realized we haven't bought a shield yet idiot Rick had no choice but to buy those potions but now I've really left my short self short in gold I'm not going to get any decent equipment I don't think to be able to finish the game now let's see what's in here I can't afford anything so we'll carry on Let me go up here I might be able to run and jump up there no nope. there's probably some secret cash up there too that's a shame missing There's something secret up here maybe it's in this wall I knew there was a boss fight somewhere uh, I'm a 
doozy doesn't seem too difficult. Just let it come to you. Ah, oh, now we're good. Really hope there's a hospital on the next level. get one of these bad boys. Probably should have gone to the bar and bought some help. Hindsight's a wonderful thing. it to the end. Oh boy. <laughs> ah well it was a good run while it lasted. I uh, always have so much fun with this game. It's a shame we couldn't finish it this time around but this is Wonder Boy in Monster Land in the Sega Master System. If you like RPGs and platformers it is a must play and as always guys thank you for joining us. Please share, subscribe, tell your friends about us and we'll see you next time.